Okay, hi there. Welcome to a video where we're going to spend a few minutes looking at two important measures of inflation, namely input price and output price inflation. Now, this has become a highly topical issue in recent weeks and months. Uh, consider this example on the screen here with the consumer goods giant Unilever suggesting that uh, there's price rises ahead for many of their most famous brands, including Marmite. And this is going to be a real test of brand strength, isn't it? Uh, will consumers uh, simply switch to an own, own brand alternative or will they continue to buy Marmite if the price rises by, let's say, 4 to 5%? So clearly something's happening in the supply chains of many industries in the UK. And this is bringing into prominence the concept of input and output price inflation. So a couple of definitions. First of all, input price inflation. Well, that is the, a measure of inflation in the prices of the materials, the fuels bought by UK manufacturers for, for processing. So you'll be familiar with the concept of factors of production. Uh, it could be a food manufacturer, for example. Input price inflation for them would be the, the changing cost of oil and gas used in production, or perhaps the, the simply the world price of ingredients used in, in food manufacturing. Output price inflation measures inflation in the prices of products as they leave the factory gate. So inputs come in and output is produced. And at that uh, level, at that stage of production, we measure output price inflation before they are sent to wholesalers and retailers. And producer prices, of course, include the profit margin that businesses make on their products. So in addition to costs such as labour, raw materials and energy, input price inflation, in addition to things like the cost of building insurance and rent and so on, producers will be adding their own profit margin on top. Now, input prices have been rising very quickly in the UK in, in recent times. So producers across many sectors have been affected by a global surge in the price of, of key ingredients and essential raw materials. And this is known as input price inflation. So examples include high prices for fertilizer and also the byproducts, uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, magnesium prices have climbed sharply, particularly as a result of cutbacks in production in, in China. And so too the price of silicon, increasing the costs for many products from car parts to, uh, to semiconductor chips. Standard, standard grade silicon is needed, for example, by car makers to produce lightweight engine parts. So in many situations, firms are having to pay a greater, higher price for the key inputs uh, they, they need. This table is from the UK and shows the annual rate of input price inflation across a range of product groups. And you can see, for example, that overall for manufacturers, input price inflation as of September, October 2021, is now more than 10%, the highest rate it's been for many years. The cost of crude oil, for example, is 60% higher it was a year before. Uh, the cost of metals and non-metallic minerals, nearly 20% higher. Chemicals, 12% more expensive. And so this is really a, a significant rise in cost. And a key economic question to think about is whether manufacturers can and or choose to pass on these costs to customers. So what factors influence whether higher input price inflation feeds through to an increase in the price of goods as they leave the factory gate, which eventually feeds through to the prices that we pay in the shops? Well, typically, when costs are rising, if you think about your microeconomics in, uh, in year 12, it's easier to pass on higher costs when the coefficient of price elasticity of demand is low. The product, for example, the final product might be seen as a necessity, or it might have strong consumer loyalty in a market where there are relatively few close substitutes for people to switch to. Secondly, it's easier for a business to pass on increased costs when a firm has market power, when they dominate the market, and this obviously links to price elasticity of demand. And if you bring a little bit of game theory into your, uh, into your answer, the decision may depend on whether other producers are also choosing to pass on higher costs.
It may be the case that manufacturers, a food manufacturer, for example, might be able to find some cost savings elsewhere. Perhaps they're able to trim some of their labour costs. Or it might be that they feel these, these higher costs are essentially temporary. The word we use is transitory. And a profitable producer may decide to absorb these costs, at least initially, in lower profits before passing them on to the next stage of production. However, if you look at the chart, the data, uh, this uh, diagram shows the index of inputs prices and output prices for the UK since 2011. And you can see for a long time, actually, input and output prices were fairly flat, indeed falling a little bit in 2015. The economy was quite close to deflation at that time. Then a gentle rise, but you can see in 2021 there's been a surge, a clear increase in both input and output inflation, although imports have been rising faster than output prices. Unilever is warning that prices will have to rise by something like 4% this year due to an increase in costs. Uh, Procter & Gamble, another maker of uh, many, many consumer products, including toothpaste, has, has said that um, they will have to increase their prices because of supply chain costs. So these things are highly topical. And if we think about the one of the really good examples is the is the is the chicken processing sector, not just the price of chicken that you pay in the supermarkets, but also ultimately the price of uh, chicken products in restaurant chains such as Nando's. The leading supplier of poultry in the UK has been saying that costs across his business are rising very strongly. Um, I think the, the guy concerned is called Beauplan and he's one of the biggest chicken makers in the UK, chicken growers, if you like. Uh, the feed costs for poultry are rising, the supplements are becoming more expensive, uh, veterinary costs are rising and we know there are big labour shortages both at factory level and HGV drivers, wages rising by more than 15%. The cost of energy has spiked up, and the cost of packaging is up, up by 20% in six months. So you can see here that this is an industry which, over the recent times, has produced mass amounts of chicken at low prices, which is facing significant input price inflation. And eventually we will pay the price in terms of higher consumer prices. Well, how can we show this? using an ADAS uh, analysis diagram. Well, this is this is clearly a good example of cost push inflation. Uh, and cost push inflation is caused by any factor that leads to an inward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve. And I've shown that clearly on this diagram here. So for many firms across the UK, inputs are becoming more expensive and that causes the short run aggregate supply curve to shift to the left and that drives up the general price level. So in terms of uh, exam gold, uh, why study this particular topic? Well, input price and output price inflation can be seen as an important lead indicator, if you like a forward indicator of what might happen to the overall inflation rate in the near future. So it could well be the case that what we're seeing now with input prices is going to lead to a surge in consumer price inflation over the next three, six months, perhaps as long as a year. And fears over accelerating inflation in the UK are largely based on what is happening to costs and prices throughout the UK's supply chain. So overall, I think this is an important story to watch for students following the debate about whether the, the many years of sustained low inflation in the UK are perhaps coming to an end. Okay, thank you for joining me on this video.